So I'm doing a short video today to tell you about the observing adventures of Harry and Dinda in Kavala, Uganda, to whom our Sunshine Coast Center of the Royal Astronomical Society of Kansas sent a telescope. Harry tells us he's been observing Venus and its various phases. And on June 14th, he had what he calls a globular cluster marathon, observing four globular clusters consecutively. So he observed Messier 92, which you see here in this photo by Ron Brecker. Messier 80, in this photo from the Hubble Space Telescope. Messier 4, from this photo from Hugh Hullux. And Messier 5, in this photo by Ron Brecker of the RESC. Harry tells me he loves the part of the sky around Sagittarius and Scorpius, which at this time of year is almost overhead at 1 a.m. And so do I. There's a lot of things to see there, but unfortunately where I am, the seashell, British Columbia, Sagittarius and Scorpius are right on the horizon, so I'm looking through three times as much atmosphere as Harry is, so I don't get as good a view as he does. And he was also observing Omega Centauri, which you see here, in this photograph from the European Space Observatory, which is the largest known globular cluster in our galaxy, and it's an absolutely amazing sight, which Harry can see from where he is, close to the equator, but we have no possible chance of seeing up here in British Columbia, so I'm hoping that someday I'll get further south so I can check that out too. Harry also found the Ring Nebula in Lyra, which you see in this picture from NASA, which is a favorite of mine. I always show it to people when we're up at the observatory if Lyra is in the sky. I'm encouraging Harry to try to find the Dumbbell Nebula, Messy 27, which you see in this photograph by Mike Bradley, because it is nearby, so he ought to be able to find that too. Tells me he's now hunting down Messy 31, the Andromeda Galaxy, but he missed it the other day because it rises very late into the sky over the horizon, and he was getting tired and went to bed before it came up above the horizon. So hopefully in the next little while he'll be able to stay up later or observe later in the year when it rises earlier and, and see that. And on June 16th he sent me these videos of him observing the moon using his phone camera. It's hard to hold the camera steady by hand to take shots like this, and he's done quite well considering it. Some of you who are interested in supporting him would like to send him a device like this to hold his camera steady over the eyepiece. That would be a, a great thing. I use one of these when I'm taking pictures at the eyepiece of my solar telescope, for example, if I'm trying to get a picture of a flare. So that's what Harry's been up to. Uh, stay tuned. We'll come back next month with another short video showing you about Harry's adventures in the sky.